And uh, we're going to call the Monday, October 27th, Raytown Charter Commission meeting to order. Lisa, can you call a roll? Jim Major. Here. <laughs> Ted Bowen. Here. Susan Dolan. Janet Emerson. Here. Lisa Emerson. Here. Jason Green. Here. Steve Gunther. Here. Sandra Hartwell. Here. Michael McDonough. Charlotte Nelson. Here. Mark Moore. Here. Eugene Van Buster. Greg Walters. All right. Uh, this is the point where we open up for public comment. Does anybody have any comment they'd like to address the commission? All right. Seeing none, we'll go into office <coughs> report. Uh, I did get um, uh, some information from Sandy that said Mary Jane had just recently fallen this afternoon, hurt her leg, leg, and thinks she might have broke her wrist, so she won't be here. And then Mike, uh, Mc Michael McDonough uh, emailed me and said that he was feeling well and would not make tonight's meeting with those. And then I have not received anything from Susan. Uh, has anybody heard from her? Okay. All right, seeing none. Um, I did, um, as far as the, well, I don't have any report officially for tonight's meeting. So we'll move to the secretary in minutes. Nothing. Just need to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Anybody have any comments towards the uh, October 20th meeting? My motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. second. All right, we have a motion by Lisa, a second by Janet. Any other comment? Um, I, I think the fire department area, that was a good meeting space. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Are we going to, are we going to do more of those? I uh, know we got the next well, let's wait until we get done with the minutes and then we can break. Here we go over here. Jim. Hi. Hi, Greg. No. All right. Any other, no other comments towards the minutes? Uh, um, we'll take a vote. Sandra Hartman. Yes. Yeah, that's all I can Janet Emerson. Yes. Um, Greg Walters. I think I'll, I'll abstain. Okay. Uh, Mark Moore. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Chuck Nelson. Yes. 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 All right. We're not going to let Jim talk to me anymore. Uh, All right. My coach is. Any uh, <laughs> any update, Mark, on the treasurer's report? Uh, not, that that, not that I know. It's the same, Steve. All right. So, what carries over? The sun change. We'll just do it that way. Old business. Uh, haven't had any other discussions with any other attorneys. I do know it's out there. I know it's published in Randy's paper and it's published in the Raytown Brooking Eagle. We did. We've done our due diligence on that. We should have. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some responses soon. Um, any other old business to discuss? Steve. Yes. Um, if it's all right for our advertising committee, I would like to set a date of next Monday at 545 at the fire department uh, to go over flood and area. Okay. Items. Are we not having a meeting next Monday? Yes, but this is just black question. Oh, okay. okay. Right, that's uh, November 3rd, and it would be at the fire station. And uh, currently, we do have the fire station reserved for November 3rd and 17th if we need it. So, um, to answer your question, Mark. Um, <clears throat> any other miscellaneous items to be discussed? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the new business of the day. Um, Greg, you made some, um, you sent us all uh, some wordage on the initiative, the referendum portions of 10.1. Uh, uh, Ted, did you also have input into this? Uh, you had talked last week that you could get together. 
the, right. just the input that we had that day. Okay. I'm not, I, I do agree with Greg though, that until somebody, uh, I'd like to know why the things that were deleted were in there in the first place. Well, I, I have got an answer to you. one of them. Uh, the levying of taxes, there was, a, there was a big concern that if you let a voter put in an initiative or a referendum, hey, it's working. All right. That uh, uh, if, if, it's, if it's not held in check, they could actually vote to eliminate taxes. That was a concern. I mean, so is there something that needs to be said to uh, any imposed future taxes or eliminate taxes or something like that? Uh, so, I mean, I just know in the tax situation, it's a really hard thing to uh, give all that power back to the, the voters. Now, um, in talking with um, uh, one other person, um, in regards to the zoning and the land issues, land use issues, uh, he was uh, wondering why in uh, the uh, description that, we, that the voters would not have a say on zoning issues or land use issues which could possibly go back to the thing that we dealt with last April with Walmart. The only, I mean, the, the citizens don't have a chance to uh, uh, voice their opinion on referendum for, on a land use issue, then, because that is one of the things listed that could be done. So. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Greg. I, I get a lot of thoughts. I gave it a lot of thought before I put the started typing all this in here, or actually I did more removing than adding. But the thing is, I, I would take issue with the person, whoever that person is, is concerned that taxpayers may want to actually lower their taxes. That's their right, and I don't think that it's wrong or that it's a bad thing that they try to do that. And I, I'm. I would almost guess that this probably comes from a lobbying group with three initials starting with an M and then any, you know. No, no, it did. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, the, no, the, thing is, the thing is, there's nothing wrong with that from my point of view. The taxpayers are the ones that are that have the final say on these things. I don't, I also took some time to look at the different charters that have been written by other communities. And uh, I noticed that the two larger cities, Independence and Kansas City, uh, based theirs upon who voted in the last election, rather than just all of the voters uh, that are registered. But that's probably due to population size. That could be, but uh, to me, I, I, I was also looking at the only cities that I can think of where there have been recall attempts and initiative refer initiatives and referendums. And both of them are in Kansas City and Independence. And Baser, Kansas, there was a recall out there. But all these, all these other ones, I think that it's been written using the template that we already have in place. It's almost written to make initiative that you can do an initiative petition, but I can't, I, for the life of me, I can't think of anything that I'd want to go out and gather 1,700 signatures for, going by what was already in there. Um, and the same thing with the uh, with the referendum, and we've got the amount set, the percentage of signatures needed, or the number of signatures needed, so high for recall that it would take more people to sign a petition to recall someone than elected them and all the votes of their opponent. And I think that we've gone too far in that. I think that part of the problem is that we're really in the dark on why it was written that way and what the state law says we can do, how much latitude we have. And that's why I, I would ask that we carry this over until we do have a sit, uh, attorney on board who can answer these questions for us. Well, we did have the percentages already in there and those were voted and approved. I understand that, but we can also revisit. Right, we can. And then at that time, hopefully we will have an attorney because we're just, what I've written here, there's no doubt it's what I would like. Whether or not it's legal, I couldn't tell you. Whether or not what was written before us in the first place was legal, except that other people have done it too. So I, I guess what I would like to do would be carry this this entire Article 10 over until we do our review and to settle it at that time. 
Okay, that's that's one thought. I mean, I, I, I don't mind uh, us getting through it with numbers in it and having them playing a view with you by returning to, to uh, cross reference numbers or whatever and give us their opinion on it. Uh, I do know um, that uh, West Plains did their initiative referendum and recall was completely different. And there's was one that was just recently done. And then I, I have talked with uh, Christine Bushyhead from uh, Lee Summit when they did their uh, addendum in 07, uh, the initiative referendum uh, numbers is something they dramatically looked at because they did have a recall. They did? Yeah. Did, so, did they reach enough, uh, did they reach, reach the threshold they had sent? Yes, they did, they did make the recall number, but then after the amendment was done, then it was, uh, I think, reduced based on okay. The um, independence recall effort was abandoned. Uh, it did the damage the ones who were passing the petition who wanted it done, apparently, because the person they were trying to recall was then defeated at the next election. So it, I, I just um, I just think that if we're going to have these items in here, we ought to make them something that can be used. Sometimes uh, there have been incidents where governments go rogue, or they, you know, they, they get a little bit out of hand, and they go opposite of what the public wants. Okay. Well, again, we discussed this last last week too. Uh, we have five different wards. That would mean getting signatures from about 350 in each ward is, that there was going to be some type of well, it's, it's not just that simple. Five people would have to sign up to form a committee to do that recall. They would have to get all that paperwork done. It, there's a lot of going through. Now, remember, this is the same group of people discussing right here where we discussed about how hard it is to get people to even file their office. And yet we're going to have no problem getting people to sign recall petitions. I, I don't especially buy that. If there are chances. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm inclined to agree with, with Greg on some of his points, especially considering, you know, I, I think we do need to revisit the recall threshold. Um, I did feel, I, I did agree to it last meeting, but thinking about it more and looking at some of the things other communities are doing, I do think that that was a little bit high on the percentage side. Being said, we need to be very cautious, obviously, not to have it too low. Um, but also with the section of what Mr. Walters um, added with the initiative portion, you know, I, I think, and I think I mentioned this last meeting in terms of, you know, some of us up here, we can start being carried away and start thinking we have JDs, and, and we don't, and I, I would feel more confident, you know, that when we do revisit it, like mentioned and suggested, that we, we do have an attorney present just so that, you know, we can see what the legal confines of the initiative are. You know, if, if you know what can and cannot apply to under Missouri state statutes, and get that legal opinion, so that we're frankly not wasting time. We can sit here and debate and discuss what we like to see in it, and then realize that half of what we debated is is kind of irrelevant because we have a legal opinion that states otherwise. And, and that's what I was getting to with uh, the one from West Plains. They actually said that they put in a line that it was all subject to uh, uh, state. Uh, uh, rulings and everything else, so they just added that sentence in there, which, which I don't know where that was, but uh, I'll find it. Sure. All right, um, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Um, <clears throat> what I do believe is that we should keep in perspective. It's a lot easier to get people to sign a petition than it is to go to the polls. And um, it's like it's easy to get people to put signs in the yard when they don't even vote. <laughs> And um, when we looked at the, the ratio, the, the people who are registered voters, the people who vote in presidential elections, the people who vote during primaries, and then the people who vote in the municipal elections, we see them go down decisively. And I would say that if we're going to keep the percentage low, then the only people who should be allowed to sign are those people who vote in municipal elections. Because that changes the whole perspective. Uh, a fewer number is easier to get if those are the actual people who participate. And a lot of people think that because they vote in a presidential election, that they're smart to sign a petition, even though they have no intention of going back to the polls during 
a city election. So I think all that comes into play when we're looking at how you're going to establish your initiative of reference and recall. Steve? Yes, Steve. Uh, Friday night, my husband and I went to um, um, chili dinner, and uh, a lot of the people were from right town and poor and surrounding areas. <coughs> and uh, so I asked people that were sitting at the table with me and some other people that I knew that, that were sitting in other places. And most of them said, especially for the recall, that's more than even vote. You know, if it, if so I voted for the 30%, but I think maybe we might have made a mistake on that. You mean in, in raising the threshold too high? Too high. high too yes. high. Not uh -huh. I, you know, everybody, um, some of the people were from my summit, and they were saying what their uh, threshold is, and they were, and then there were some people from independence there as well. And I'm thinking, well, 30% is pretty high. But yeah, and these summits are the one that I saw that was different, where they do 30%. Of the votes cast for the for that office in the election for which that office was elected, so they go back to that individual person's election, look at how many votes well, they cast. I think that's more, that's fair than because we don't a lot of people are registered, but they don't always vote, okay. especially in city elections. I think it should be on the number of people that voted. Yeah, now these summits got way over twice our population, so mm -hmm. trying to gather. If you went. You know, in our case, if we had 1,700 voters vote in that election, 30% of that would just be a little over 630, so, uh, or not even that much, uh, a little over 50 minutes. But anyway, um, so what we got to look at is, is that too few? Uh, now, like I said, at least some of them twice the population, if they got 5,000 voters out instead of 17 like we did, 30% of that would be 1,500 signatures. And so, um, and the range that we saw for recall was anywhere from loose springs of 12% up to 30% that we've seen in most municipalities. So, I mean, I'm open it up to uh, whatever you guys want to do here. I mean, if we want to relook at the issue on percentages now or just have the attorney address it, uh, I, I'm okay either way. Right? Right. Well, Oh, okay, I'm the floor. Sorry. I um, you know, I think an attorney should look at some things, but I think the percentage is up to us. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, an attorney can give us, you know, maybe what they've seen before, but you know, that's a decision I feel comfortable this this board making without the attorney, attorney's presence. Um, being said, um, again, I, I prefer the number like I stated last meeting to be based off registered voters because it's a consistent number. Um, you know, you could have a bad turnout due to like a storm or something like that, where you know, literally, you could drastically change things in the in the favor or against a particular individual. You know, so again, I, I want to see a consistent number, and I think basing it off registered voters is, is the consistent thing to do. You know, the state of Missouri does the same thing. Um, you know, for for the state representative seats, you know, state senate seats, things like that, and state initiatives. So uh, again, I, I would suggest that we stay in line with basically on register voters. I just want to look at the percentage on the recall because I do feel like it was too high. I think according to the numbers, and Lisa can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think per ward, it was something like 1,100 signatures, I think, according to what we've established. It's like 1,100 signatures to, to, to initiate a recall. And I think she pointed out right now, is that somewhat correct? Um, um, there's 16,867 actual registered voters at 30%. That would be uh, roughly 4,000. Uh, roughly 4,000. Right, around well, 5,000. Well, yeah, I'm talking about more for, for recall. The recall issue is at 30%. Rushing is 7 10, correct? Yeah, 30% of 16,000, 17,000 is right, about 5,000. Well, yeah, but I'm talking more for, for 1,000. Yeah, so like, yeah, a little over a thousand things were wrote down. 
And you know, I'd be more comfortable if that number was lower than a couple hundred votes per one. Well, if you did 20%, you're looking at uh, 32, 3,300. Yeah, around 3,300. Yeah, well, I'm also trying to break it down per ward because you know, obviously, have citywide and also ward. Right, twenty percent is twenty-five percent, the eight hundred something, correct? Well, yeah. it's forty-two hundred fifty divided by ten, so it'd yeah. be four hundred twenty-five. Or divided by five, so eight hundred something. Yeah, eight fifty, roughly eight fifty per ward. Um, for for and again, I'm giving an multiple perspective here. And 20% is going to be 3,400. Six, yeah, six, yeah, six, eight. Okay. Well, I mean, and again, just a little background. I know in my particular election, just my ward, April 2013, literally 550 people voted. That's all it was, and that was including me and the two opponents I was facing. It's like 550. So it's very low voter turnout in those uh, April elections. Or at least not non. I'm on the non-mayor cycle, so it's even lower, I think, than it would be if it was on a different one. So, we have to go to All right, go ahead, Mark. I was late. Uh, uh, I was going to ask uh, what the numbers would show up, 15%. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we did 15 or percent. She's got another phone. <laughs> 15%. Fifteen percent would be uh, sixteen, seven, eight. Hold on, we have that one to our list since we don't have it. I mean, I'd be inclined not to uh, go below twenty percent. Uh, I mean, then you're kind of you're getting close to matching the number of votes that were passed in the last election, and so per ward. Divided by five. Yes. yes. So about six hundred. Yes, but those votes, the those were divided. Uh, Jason, you got five hundred and fifty votes, or the total of five fifty. Yeah, votes just April thirteen, it was five hundred and fifty total votes cast. Yeah. So that's a split. Let's just say it's a split. Let's say it's a fifty fifty rate. Two fifty wants yin yang. Two fifty wants yang. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, to get 600, I mean, you're way out. I mean, you're still way on top of everything. I think you've got to come down to. 515%. Because 250 of those voters are going to say no if they voted for the man or, the, or that person that wants to be recalled. The yeah. other person wants recall. So why not? You know, and the thing I think about too is that, yeah. again, you know, you based on yeah. registered yeah. voters, because again, you know, like for instance, you know, Oliver Asia, he's. He's obviously the other alderman from my ward, and there's higher turnout in his race because he's on the citywide, the, the mayor race, if you will. So there's always a little more turnout on those than there is for the off cycle years. You know, kind of like midterms, presidents, if you will. I think a little bit, not to that degree, but to some. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what you guys think about the professional numbers. I mean, the, the, the way we're describing it now is almost uh, a decision that, that someone will not be recalled because if, if the vote was, if the ticket was split 50-50, I'm just using this to make it easy, that means you got 250 votes, the other person got 250 votes. You want to recall someone and you want 20% of the numbers at 600 or 5 something? Yeah, well, it's 620. You, you're guaranteed not to. You're guaranteed not to get the 250 that voted that person. In. Well, no, I mean, I, you can't say that because they can change their mind. They, see how yeah, they, they do, but I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm not splitting hairs here. But if you say if we've got a threshold of 600 voters and there's only 550 total, you split the vote. It's 250, 250. So to start at 250 is what I'm saying. Oh, that's right. Too low for yeah. recall. There's something, or the split of the vote. But I want to add something to that. There's a difference in asking, say, for a petition to uh, ask people to sign a petition for a charter commission. That doesn't make anybody angry, or in most cases. It doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. It doesn't put your name on the line as saying, I'm going to sign this petition because I want this guy to buy my own out of office. That's a big jump. And it's not going to be as easy to get those signatures as you think it will. 
I passed petitions that are very much in that. I, I did a petition for uh, an audit of the Baytown Police Department many, many years ago. And uh, I worked on it with people, and we did get the, the petition signed. And I can remember very clearly the people coming down the street when I was four houses away saying, wait a minute, I changed my mind, I want to take my name off. And they had me hand the petition back to them so they could scratch their name off. They just had second thoughts about it because it's a much, it's a tougher decision. And particularly in a small community like Raytown, where if you lived here any given amount of time, you begin to know everybody and they begin to know you. And it's just a, a line a lot of people will not cross. So I, I think that you have to keep that in mind also. If somebody is out there judging from, I mean, I don't know how much effort went into gathering petitions just to form this charter commission. And it took a lot of effort. There were a lot of people who went out and, and gathered petitions, and it was not an, an easy task. And there were people who said, no, I don't want it. And wouldn't sign it. But by and large, most of them did and said, what the heck, it's just making a decision so that we can vote on it. No harm there. But the net, this what we're talking about here is you're, you're talking to somebody who put their name on a public document that the other person's got the right to look at and see who they're not going to invite over for coffee anymore. Okay, so what, what, <laughs> what percentages are you interested in? I, I'm more interested in the 15%. I think that it's, it's a high threshold that takes us above how many people actually voted in the elections. I think it's something that, given the, the, the other groups you have to go through, such as the forming of the committee, a, form, a formal committee, and so forth, how many people have run campaigns where they had more than three people on their election committee? That are active. Well, at 15 percent, Greg, you're only looking at 2,530 total signatures citywide, citywide, city -wide. and about 506 per ward. So, uh, and you wanted 20. And I was, I mean, I could agree with 20. Why don't we split the difference? Say 17. See what that does. I see 17 and a half. Just practice your math. Here. It's All right. While well, she's doing that, though. Uh, <laughs> On the other two measures, uh, where we said 10%, I mean, I know Lee Summit 7, Blue Springs is 8, we used 8, that would require still 1,360 signatures to even bring something up. I, I would be okay on the other two measures if those we used 8. That, I think that's fair, and, and it's the same argument that I was just giving. It's not a hard thing to bring up a, a non-personal issue to get people to sign a petition as it is when you've got people's names on the line. All right, Jim, go ahead. Sorry. I think one thing to keep in mind is that when you have a recall petition, it doesn't remove the person from office. Right. It, it calls for a recall election. And the people will be going back to the polls to vote for that person again or his opponent, whoever chooses to run against them. They're not automatically just kicked out of office. So, well, I mean, so when you get a recall election, yeah. you want to make sure that you're spending your money. And that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Is that the, the person gets recalled, they can still run. Uh, then doesn't, I mean, according to what we already written, doesn't the board have to appoint a new person from that board? I don't think so. I don't think that the recall mm -hmm. is it's a recall election. Well, yeah. recall I guess it depends on how you write it. Depends on how you write it. I know in Kansas City, I, I, I really don't know. Ours only has that one section, subsection. Subsection C? That's a recall. I don't know. I really don't know how it works. I know Kansas City, they have the recall and then they have the election. No, in, in, in our, in our, well, we've already written. Uh -huh. uh, it does say if a person is recalled, then, they, then we have a process for appointing a, a new person there. It is in our. See, that's what doesn't make sense. What you're saying is it takes less people, fewer people, to get them out of office and didn't put them there. And so the minority wins. No, you still have the election. I mean, the, all yeah. we're doing is vote on the number of signatures here. It's it still has to go before the people to vote on it. So, I mean. So they're still in office until they vote on it. Right. They're still in office and they still have to get a majority vote either way of the people. So, um, all right. Well, hey, Susan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Okay, 17.5 gives us roughly 2,982, 52, I'm sorry, signatures total and 590 
at per ward approximately. I mean, everybody's heard a lot of discussion here. Does anybody have any other opinions? I just have a question. Okay, well, oh, first it's question. Kind of, it's kind of like I don't feel like it's live here. Go ahead, Samuel. Um, where did the 30% come from in the first place? Uh, that seemed to be the majority. Uh, let, me, let me just, well, Eminem does not have recall in it, okay, so they don't have a percentage that they suggest. Uh, of the ones I looked at, uh, I told you what the summit was based on the, that person's recall part of the election. Uh, and then other communities like Raymore Bell do have 30 percent, and then uh, I don't I haven't checked uh, West Plains, but yeah, uh, the ones I've got 30 percent seem to be the majority. But I, I mean, I'm I'm, li I'm willing to go to 17, 18 percent, and 8 percent on the other two. If somebody wants to make a motion that way. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay, well, walking in as I have um, in the middle of this discussion, I just ask that you all bear in mind that um, the numbers are one thing. Another thing that bears a great deal of consideration is the fact that <coughs> initiation, referendum, and recall are expensive propositions. Mm -hmm. And it, um, and I think that in light of that, that their numbers should also be kept attainable because the voters are going to know that they already have the money not required to get there. Um, if we keep the, the numbers inobtainable in, in um, pursuing their wishes, they're not going to be happy with us or, or our body of work. And that's why we're trying to get to the number that we can all agree on. I think this is a really important um, yeah. point that we're on. And again, just to keep that, all the expenses in mind. Okay. Please and thank you. Thank you, Susan. All right, so does somebody want to make a motion? Of this? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. You had 17 and a half percent. Second. And what about the other two? Did you? The ten percent on initiative referendum. You know the. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Are we making one motion for all of this? Yeah. Let's try to Yeah. Okay. A, B, and C. Or just yeah. Yeah. A, B, and C. For sure. The other two were uh, ten percent. So what do you want to move to? Yeah, 17.5. So recall 17.5. Right. No, we're good. No, we're lowering them. Oh, okay. Well, we've been, we've been discussing it. It's, it's on the debate whether it's seven or eight, I think. Let's do that. Let's do that just because then you can go off. Okay. All right, go ahead. 17.5%. Oh, I know. 17.5%. Jason, the other two on the recall. So that's big enough. Yeah, the way it works here. Um, we are discussing the section 10.3 petitions. A3 recall, Correct. reducing that to 17.5 percent from 30 percent. Okay, just check. Oops. Okay, so we have a motion by Mark and a second by Jason. Any other comment? Just to clarify, 17.5 uh, percent, that would be 2,952 citywide and per board that would be roughly 590, assuming my figures are correct. Okay, all right. Is everybody clear on this? Yes, and that was based on the previous 
No, the registered voters, the total voters. Voters of 16,000? Yeah, 16,800. The voting voters were under 2,000, so. Okay, well, uh, one thing I was going to say is that I know in 1999 when I ran, I had 917 votes. And there was two of us running. The other one had 774, I think. So, I mean, it's not always the low numbers that you see, and it depends on what, whether it's the issue or what's going on. So it's not always um, those little numbers as we've had before. But I think as Jim clarified, that's just to get something possibly put on the election or on the ballot. And so, but we still have a chance to do it. The, right. the thing is, we don't want to waste the tax money or dollars either on the election. All right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Lisa, can you call please? Sandra Harbaugh. Yes. Jim Asia. No. Janet Emerson. Yes. Steve Gunther. No. Susan Dolan. Yes. Uh, Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. No. Jason Green. Yes. Motion carries eight to three. Um, discussion then on item A or one initiative on that same section. Mark. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, suggest maybe eight percent. See what that number is. We have a second on eight percent. Oh, okay. What are we doing? Hold on. We're figuring the exact numbers. Eight percent. Of the registered voters would be 1,350. And per ward, do you want that? I don't know if it's Yeah. Okay. 1,350. Again, assuming my figures are correct. I have a quick question just to clarify something, Steve. You said a lot of other cities haven't said it. You've seen it at 8% before. Yeah, uh, at least some it's 8, uh, or excuse me, uh, at least some it's 7, New Springs is 8. They do have larger populations. Yeah, of course, but it's based on registered voters, correct? Okay. Uh, I'll second. All right, thank you, Greg. Thank you. Second. Motion. Well, we motion first. What? Okay. Can, can you restate this? Question. It's Mark, is this for 10.3A1 and 2 or just one? Just one. Just one. From 30% to 8%. No, oh, sorry, 10% to 8%. 10% to 8%. Thank you. Which would be 1,350, you said? Yes. Which is this for both referendum and initiative? Just initiative right now. Just initiative. All right, any other discussions? All right. So your motion was to change the initiative to 8%. Yes, it is. And Greg seconded it? Greg seconded Thank you. Yeah. We'll take a vote. Jason Green. Um, pass. Steve Gunther. Yes. Ted Bowman. No. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Oh, I'm sorry. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Major. No. Susan Dolan. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. No. Mark Moore. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Harpo. Yes. Um, Jason Green. Yes. Motion carries eight to three. Okay, any others out there? Mark. <coughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make a motion to change the referendum from 10% to 8% also, please. That would put the number at 1350. Mm -hmm. Okay.
second. All right, we are discussing. Seeing none, we'll take a look. Lisa Anderson, yes. Jason Green? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Janet Anderson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? No. Greg Walters? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Ted Bowman? No. My Demetra? Uh, no. Most of us carry the three, so we have revised those numbers on the section 10.3 of petitions, initiative 8%, referendum 8%, and recall at 17.5. All right. Um, let's continue on then with section 10.4. Um, uh, I have not gotten a response back from Teresa. I emailed her uh, trying to get the time frame um, to uh, put it in to remove the word prompt place in the letter of the certificate to the petition. Um, that was read in section 10.4a. And again, like I said, I have not gotten a response whether it's going to take her five days, ten days, what the turnaround time is. So uh, I think we'll have to carry that one on until we get a response. All right. Um, unless there's, unless somebody wants to bring something up or have some additional information that they might want to add on 10.4. If not, we'll continue with where we left off last week at section 10.6, in action on initiative referendum and recall. Does anybody want to take the floor and start to read? Sure. Yes, Greg. This is, I really feel that we would be better off if we just carried it over at the point we're at now until we do have a legal advisor because if you get into <laughs> language that as Jason pointed out, we really don't have the JDs to do it here. So we could just move on and probably cover a lot more territory and uh, come back when we have an attorney who can advise us on the whys and where, of course, on these, these uh, particular items, particularly in ABC. Okay. Uh, is that also, I mean, is it also carrying over 10.7 the results of elections? I mean, that seems to be relative. They, they seem to go hand in hand. If you want to just go on this part of 11 financial procedures. Because even, even the question that we had on the earlier session where you were waiting on the city clerk. Uh, yeah, I think we can do 10.7. I mean, it's just stating how the results of elections are going to be certified. I mean, that would. Okay. It doesn't go into the nuts and bolts of anything. All right. At least I don't feel that way. All right, so with that being the case, I'll go ahead and start reading section 10.7. Or actually, we have to have a vote to carry on 10.6, is what you want to do. Carry over until carry over. we have our legal advisor. Do we have a, is that a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Jason. Yes. <coughs> Any other discussion? You got one way in on this? All right, seeing that, we'll have a vote. And clarification. <laughs> okay, we'll do one of these. Let me speak. Let me pick it up. Um, clarification on the vote, please. We are carrying over. Section 10.6, action on initiatives, referendum, and recall, so it can be. Right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Jim Asher? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Charlotte Wilson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Lisa Emerson Epstein? Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Uh, Susan Dolan? Yes. No, I think that's a yes. Sorry. Uh, motion carries. 
Article 11, Financial Procedures, Section 11.1, Fiscal Year. The Board of Aldermen shall determine the fiscal year of the city. Section 11.2, Submission of Budget, budget Message. Before the beginning of the fiscal year, the city administrator shall submit to the May, to the mayor, to the, sorry, to the mayor and Board of Aldermen a budget for the ensuing fiscal year and an accompanying message. Section 11.3, Budget. The budget shall provide a complete financial plan of all city funds and activities for the ensuing fiscal year and except as required by law or this charter shall be in such form as the city administrator deems desirable or the Board of Aldermen may require. In no event shall the total proposed expenditures exceed the estimated revenues to be received plus any unencumbered un 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 I can't read either. Cash reserves, encumbered cash reserves estimated to be on hand at the beginning of the budget year. And I have a question. Yeah. Is there any reason that all, in front of all cities, should be capitalized? Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> should I keep reading or do you? No, let's go ahead and. The motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Pretty plain and simple. All right, we'll take a vote. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Charlotte Wilson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Janasia. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Lisa Anderson. Yes. Motion again carries 11 0. Thank you. All right, we'll go to section 11.4. We'll do all of section 11.4 capital program. Okay, just that the session. All right. Capital program with section 11.4. Submission to Board of Aldermen. City Administrator shall prepare and submit to the Mayor and the Board of Aldermen a five-year capital program prior to the final date for submission on the budget. The Board of Aldermen, by resolution, shall adopt the capital program with or without amendment on or before the last day of the month of the current fiscal year. B. Contents. The capital program shall include a clear general summary of its contents. Two. A list of capital improvements that are proposed to be undertaken during the five fiscal years ne next ensuing with appropriate supporting information as to the necessity for such improvements. Three, cost estimates, method of financing and recommended time schedules for each such improvement, and four, the estimated annual cost of operating and maintaining the facilities to be constructed or acquired. The above information may be revised and extended each year with regard to capital improvements still pending or in the process of construction or acquisition. Okay, I just got two quick things. Uh, in uh, A, where you said submission on the budget, and I think it says submission of the budget. Is there, did you want to make a change to that? Or? Yeah, whatever it's fine, I just, oh, I may have, I have said it, I may have spoken on. Okay, yeah, it's a and then on, submission to the budget. Don't you suggest submission of the budget? Of the budget, yeah. And then on item two, letter D, you left out the word all the four capital. On item B, number two, yeah. a list of all capital improvements. Okay. okay, that's all I have. I know. <laughs> yes, Ted. <coughs> two and three, just two, two and three discuss capital improvements. Four discusses capital programs in general. Is there a reason why we only list capital improvements as opposed to all of the capital programs, all being acquisitions and construction of new assets? Then maybe part of the five-year Capital improvements be part of the five-year yeah, I mean, why are they only listing capital improvements instead of all capital projects? Like new purchases, new acquisitions, the creation of new infrastructure. Well, I mean, the, the, uh, the budget is different from the capital improvements, isn't it? It, it is. That's 
why I'm asking. We're talking about the capital program here. Yeah. Right. Well, in four, it's just talking about the, they're wanting an estimated cost for operating and maintaining the facilities to be constructed or acquired. That would be yeah. as part of, right, but it would be part of the capital program, uh, something that, you know, that we might anticipate trying to do in the future. It wouldn't be part of the actual fiscal year budget right then. It's my thought. Well, we just do. Why don't we just replace the word improvements with programs or projects? Two. Two, two and three. three. Yeah, Pro I don't mean programs, I mean projects. Because three has of each such improvement. So maybe project. of each such project. Okay, so on item two, you want to say capital projects? Yes, capital improvement does not include acquisitions. And then on... Just change the word improvements to projects. Three, it would be projects. Each, each such project. Yeah. Any other discussion on that? Is everybody okay with that? Here, we also got... The last sentence is the above information may be revised extent regarding each capital. So, you have, so the last sentence you want project as well. Maybe projects for yeah projects. So there's three changes. We've got capital for five year capital programs in A. Are we changing that as well? Only well, programs is kind of encompasses. Yeah, but programs and approved are two different okay. things. So all, all right. Any other? Slide rewording. Susan, did you have something? No, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you would reread B, please. B contents. The capital program shall include one, a clear general summary of its contents, two, a list of all capital projects that are proposed to be undertaken during the five fiscal years next ensuing, with appropriate supporting information as to the necessity for such improvement. Yeah. Um, Improvements? Are we changing that also to? I don't think so. No. Ten. No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Three. Cost estimates. Method of financing and recommended time schedules <coughs> for each such project. And four. The estimated annual cost of operating and maintaining the facilities to be constructed or acquired. The above information may be revised and extended each year with regard to capital projects still pending or in process of construction or acquisition. Everybody okay with the wording there? Then? If so, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Jason. Any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, Lisa, would you take a vote, please? Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Janasia? Yes. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Janet Anderson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? I'm sorry, Greg Walters? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. We'll go to section 11.5, City Council Action on Budget. Section 11.5, City Council Action on Budget. A notice of hearing. The Board of Baldwin shall publish in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city a general summary of the budget and a notice stating one the times and places where copies of the message and budget are available for inspection by the public and two the time and place not less than two weeks after such publication for a public hearing on the budget b amendment before adoption after the public hearing the board of aldermen may adopt the budget with or without amendment in amending the budget it may add or increase programs or amounts and may delete or decrease any programs or amounts except expenditures required by law or for debt service or for elimination of a projected cash deficit. C. Adoption. The Board of Alderman and Byrons shall adopt the budget on or before the last day of the month of the fiscal year currently ending. It, if, if it 
guess not. It if it if man if it fails to adopt the budget by this day, the amounts appropriated for current operation for the phys current fiscal year shall be deemed adopted for the ensuing fiscal year on a month to month basis, with all items in appropriated prorated rather. I'm having trouble today. Prorated accordingly until such time as the Board of Aldermen adopts a budget for the ensuing fiscal year. Adoption of the budget shall be to the appropriations of the amounts specified therein as expenditures from the funds indicated. Okay, the only thing uh, that we're trying to do to be consistent uh, in section 11.5A is adding something for electronic media or a hard copy. I have at least a reading to make it. This is just what I threw in as a suggestion. Um, on a notice and hearing, the Board of Aldermen shall publish in one or more, um, how did I put that? In one or more electronic media or hard copy of general circulation in the, in the city, a general summary of the budget and the notice. Um, that way we're covering newspapers and or um, websites, assuming we don't have newspapers in five years or something like that, we won't have to uh, change the charter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it might all be fine. I don't know, it might be some other form of communication. So that way, if uh, it's, it's still a public notice thing, but it's not restricting it to the type of media. Yeah, right. I, I was going to suggest, rather than, you, and I agree that it should be done because, after all, we are in the 21st century. But um, you could simply say, that the Board of Aldermen shall publish in one or more newspapers of general circulation and post on the city's website a general summary of the budget and notice stating. The point being that anybody that could link to that website in the publication and not have to go through the problem of reposting, re recreating the wheel and reinventing the wheel. Also, on paragraph two, you want to insert, I think, did you cover that? Or a number two, it says not the time and place not less than two weeks after such publication and posting for a public hearing on the budget. And can we change that to fewer? Or you could change it to electronic posting if you want to. Um, here's the issue you said on the first one newspapers, but again, what if there aren't newspapers in five years? And the other issue is, if what if we don't have a city website necessarily? I doubt that that would be the case. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm just throwing right there. The electronic would already be electronic media or hard copy of general circulation that covers all the things. I understand, and it, as long as I, I think it's important that it be there from from a selfish point of view. I'd rather link to the city's website than have to go in and post. Yeah, I didn't disagree. I just yeah. found in case. But I just can't imagine a city not having a website. No, I understand that. I think I was thinking at the time was the issue of um, if they're if the city is controlling the information versus other publications. Well, that's that's my second point of view of it. Yeah, I, I think it's I, I agree with that, but I think it's also important that this, that the posting on the city's website be in line with and and the dissemination as you suggested be in line uh, with the timing for the print media, but sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So the wording you're suggesting, the Board of Aldermen shall publish in one or more newspapers of general, general circulation, the city website, and any other electronic or hard copy media, something like that. Well, that's reasonable, they cover all the bases. And then on two, Greg, do you want, uh, can you reread what you put in there? You added some words on two. I just said, I would say after the time and place, not less than two weeks after such publication and electronic, and electronic posting, <clears throat> and actually publication is proper too by itself, I think it's important to put in electronic posting as well, because you could say that you published it in a print media, even though he didn't do the electronic posting, so this covers all the bases. 
Any other discussion? Seeing, yeah, go ahead, Lisa. We read um, A and 2, please. Okay, how does this sound? A, notice in hearing, the Board of Aldermen shall have published in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city, on the city website, and or in any other electronic or hard copy media, a general summary of the budget and a notice stating, one, the times, times and places where the copies of the message and budget are available for inspection by the public, and two, the time and place not less than two weeks after such publication and posting for a public hearing on the budget. Electronic so. posting. Electronic. Oh, <coughs> electronic. Posting. We're specifying electronic. Okay. Well, it says exactly. Right. Okay. Great, is that correct? Electronic posting yes. specified. Any other discussion? Yes, is it? Well, it's more of a question. You know, looking back on personal experience with trying to find this information, I seem to recall it's extremely difficult. We went to some obscure website, maybe it's not obscure to y'all, but it was to me. Um, and then I had to, if I recall correctly, I had to pay a dues or a membership to get in there to see it. And I hope I'm wrong about that. That just want to make sure that people can get to it, no charge, easy to find. I think we did state that earlier in part of the uh, charter that there was a section where we said there would be no cost for this. Was it for everything? Yeah, it was for everything. Yeah. 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 Or was any publication? Yeah, yeah. Can I make one quick tweak on A? I said and or for all the things, but if you want newspapers and on the website, I changed it to uh, newspapers of general circulation in the city and on the city website, comma, and or in any, or in any other electronic or, uh, yeah, just to make sure. This. Read just that A again, because the and or is important. Yeah, I'm trying Mandating to... a website is just... Yeah, I think we should just chop that out. How about this? Would it bring down charters? Well, I know, but the board of aldermen would have it published yeah. there. It would be a third party doing it, so... Okay, we just chop it out. In the notice of the hearing, the board of aldermen shall have published in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city and on the city website a general summary of the budget and a notice stating. Okay. No. Then anybody else can okay. see No, you just mandated a website. No. Yeah. It, it said the city's website. Yeah. You that was the problem I had. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is, though. Okay. <laughs> Ted brought this up to the second if you don't mind, I'll kind of try to speak to me what you say because I kind of agree with it. You know, and I, I understand what we're doing here, but maybe it should be another word for it just because, you know, in a hundred years, you know, the internet may be dead, maybe something else. I mean, we don't know. Well, well, it be. well I know that it's a city website, so, I mean, the thing is, is it's, it's, it needs to be the word maybe. The website is, just, is a particular thing. It's just, this is, too much this is what my argument was, if you put and or, that could take care of any of the things. So, so I got a word. 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 I got a Well, that's what I was trying to do. Oh, okay. That was my argument to begin with. Okay, but, I mean, why don't we just say, that's right. so I did. the board of all men shall have published in one or more newspapers and, uh, uh, and electronic posting of general circulation in the city. Or and another form of media. Yeah, and or. And. And or new electronic posting or something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> One more time. <clears throat> Once more, unto the breach. A notice in the hearing. The Board of Aldermen 
and shall have published in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city and or in any other electronic media available to the public, a general summary of the budget and that is stated. That's covers it. Well, it doesn't name any particular one. All right. And Mr. Chairman, yeah, says that'll be the squirrel on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Just a question. Is it published or published? Shall have published. Because they're not, the Board of Aldermen is not. The Board of Aldermen isn't themselves publishing it. They're having somebody else publish it. So I said, shall have published. Shall have signed. To add the ED on it? Yeah, it's on there. Shall have published. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to grasp what we're doing here. Um, when we uh, get our budgets, you know, they're, they're pretty lengthy and uh, they're by department. So um, just trying to comprehend how this would work. Um, we're going to publish a, a, a Exactly what are we going to publish in the paper by department uh, and put on our website? And who was going to do this? Would this be done by department or would you have the clerk do it? Uh, how much are we really talking about here? That's what I'd like to know because our budgets are by, let's take the police department for example. How much are they going to publish on their budget in a newspaper? How much is it going to cost the city to do that? How lengthy would it be? And I know a newspaper, for example, the number of pages are based upon the uh, amount of advertisement. So oh, that's what I'd like to know. What, what, what is all this requiring? Right. Does that, somebody have a handle on that? I mean, is all the information already generally published? It says general summary. It's, 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 a, it's the general summary pages. It's not the entire budget. Are, do it. I mean, publishing, publishing the entire budget in an electronic form is not difficult. I don't mean, but that's not what's being said here. It says a general summary. And then just want to know what that entails. Is that by department? Is it just a, hey, we're having a budget? I mean, I'm not sure what that means. Well, that's more of a definition of the word general. I mean, we're intending not to publish the entire document in the newspaper. I mean, that, that would be no, we're problem. talking about a summary. It said summary, and I, and I want to know what a general summary is. That by department, or what does that mean? I, I, I just think it's a fair. If we're going to put this in the charter, I, I think it's a fair question. What is a general summary that we're going to publish? What are we expecting? Why? If it's important to do it, what are we doing? Well, the question is, I agree with Lisa. Is there a current standard for what is? Put in the general summary. Um, well, you know, I, I, I tell you what, I think that, you know, I've only looked at two of these things um, the past couple of years, but you have a line items, you know, for department, if you will, that, you know, kind of like a cheat sheet, if you will. I mean, that's, when I think of general summary, you know, I get a list of revenue and expenditures for each department, you know, and again, you know, those, I'm trying to describe the actual sheet it is. It's a cheat sheet, it's like the first page on each department, you know, that kind of has some of that stuff kind of broken down. At least that's my view of, in my opinion, of what a summary is. Yeah, that is. Yeah. In the paper, and I'm sure somebody will correct me, is just the big numbers of the budget with the publication of the hearing. So it's, there's not like a huge summary of our budget. It's just the encapsulated numbers of the budget, and then it, it posts uh, the hearing for the budget, the public hearing. <coughs> so there's not like a huge general summary of each line item with all the different departments and that. I mean, it's just the numbers. Is, it just is there a line item by the department? <laughs> is there a line item by the department that adds up to the total, or? I, in my head, that's what I'm seeing in the picture. Yeah. It hasn't been published in the papers for five years, I can tell you that. Yeah. What else? It has not been published in the paper in five years. Okay. The general summary? Of the no, nothing. Wow. Not even an announcement? Well, I mean, 
mean, now would be the time if we want to add something that describes general summary, or we can put it in a list of definitions. Jesus. <laughs> yes, and I, I, I think we, we should notify the public. Mm -hmm. I guess my question would be is, what did the general sub, uh, uh, summary mean to the public? Or we should tell them what it is. This is what we're going to give them. And maybe it's the bottom line. Uh, the general summary of the budget in Toto, for that department. At, at, at least we should describe what this summary is going to entail. In, in, in a few words. I agree. That's great. Mr. Chairman, why don't we send this to the finance director and ask what they might suggest as a general summary? And that way we could get what they will show as being helpful and also give the knowledge that. We would want two formats, one of course for the newspaper, then one for those that people like to get down to the nitty gritty of each one could go on uh, the website because there's unlimited space there. And it should be easy to convert. So and that way we could find out what's what's a practical way and we could look at it and see if it satisfies our curiosity up here. If there are ten people that they make the general okay. I would point out that we sound like we're creeping off of the mission here a little bit because this is about notice and hearing that there is going to be a budget here. I mean, you're giving notice that here's the time and place when you can appear and give your opinion about this budget and the general summary is nothing more than here's how much money we're taking in, here's how much we're spending, and the rest of it is in the document that this notice tells you where to go and look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not, it makes a lot of sense. There's, yeah. there's, not, there's not a lot of detail necessary here to just give notice that here's where the budget is, here's where you can go look at it, here's when you can come tell us what you think. That's that's the section that we're reading. Mm -hmm. It's all it's talking about. Is everybody okay with it? I, I, I agree. I, I, Scott, I mean, if we're real curious as to what the final format should be, go to the one that has to build it. Well, well, then, if that seems to be the consensus, does somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion to approve. Okay. Mark, is that it? It's a motion as read with the corrections, the final corrections. Did the secretary read that one more time, Steve? Okay. 11.5 City Council Action on Budget. A. Notice and hearing. The Board of Aldermen shall have published in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city and or in any other electronic media available to the public a general summary of the budget and a notice stating, one, the times and places where copies of the message and budget are available for inspection by the public, and two, the time and place no less than two weeks after such publication and electronic posting for a public hearing on the budget. B. Amendment before adoption. After the public hearing, the Board of Aldermen may adopt the budget with or without amendment. In amending the budget, it may add or increase programs or amounts and may delete or decrease any programs or amounts except expenditures required by law or for debt service or for elimination of the project and ca projected cash deficit. C. Adoption. The Board of Aldermen by ordinance shall adopt the budget on or before the last day of the month of the fiscal year currently ending. If it fails to adopt the budget by this day, the amounts appropriated for current operation for current fiscal for the current fiscal year shall be deemed adopted for the ensuing fiscal year on a month-to-month -month basis with all items that are prorated accordingly until such time as the Board of Aldermen adopts a budget for the ensuing fiscal year. Adoption of the budget shall constitute appropriations of the amounts specified therein as expenditures from the funds indicated. Okay. Is that what everybody else is here? If so, there's no other discussion. The vote. Jim Asia. Yes. Lisa Emerson, yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Ted Bonin. Yes. Jen Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Okay, motion carries 11-0. Uh, it's going on 8 o'clock. Does anybody want to take a break? Because right now we have just the rest of this section available, I believe. And then while we have a few more articles after this, which I need to uh, get to Lisa for getting out there and watching it. So, uh, you want to go ahead and take a five minute break? Yeah, sure. All right, thanks. Do you really have to sponsor? No, we don't. Do you really have to sponsor? No, we don't. Do you really have to sponsor? No, we don't.
James. I think I hear somebody coming. There we go. There's one of them. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you, Tom. We're just glad to see you. Yes. Has anybody seen Jim? No. I think uh, he's in the uh, he's in the head. <laughs> All right. Sure. If this is the people's house, and that's the people's art, how come when they come into the people's house, the people can't see the people's art on the wall, as they said? I have to turn around. That's probably not going to be but you made a good point. All right, we're going to continue with section 11.6 public records. Jason, you got the voice? What's up, sir? Coaching coach in the day two. Okay, <clears throat> section 11.6 public records, copy of the budget in the capital program. Should I say programs? Or program programs. Okay, programs. As adopted shall be public records and shall be made available to the public at suitable places in the city. The Board of Aldermen shall publish annually in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city a summary of accounting of the receipts and expenditures for the preceding year. Should I continue or run the same issue we to earlier? Uh, let's get this one because the next one, uh, section 11 is a little more. Okay. And there's a couple questions. Yeah. Um, so we're changing uh, capital program to programs, plural. Yeah. Correct? Okay, and as adopted shall be public record. Correct? Not public records, just a public record. It's only known. And shall be made available to the public at suitable places in the city. The program shall publish annually in whatever we did before. Correct? Yeah. Or shall have published. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, could we possibly uh, something think about copies? Copies available free of the budget in the capital program. Um, I think that some folks have said they have they've had issues trying to get copies from the the city here and uh, maybe trying to be charged for certain things. Well, I think we do have that covered in some place, so I think the charter was in the All documents. Was it that inclusive? Yes, all documents. I think that Teresa oversees. Yes. And I can go back and look at the exact one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure that we. As I recall, we did. As I recall, we did two things. One of them was the electronic addition, or the requirement of electronic copies, because part of the argument was about uh, paper costs and the amount that they were charging per page. If it's an electronic document, that doesn't. Which, when we had that discussion, we made both of those changes: that it be free, and that it, and that electronic copies be. Free. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it had to do with the section on the city clerk, discussing the city clerk and the yeah. responsibility. I thought it was all inclusive, but apparently it is not. Um, it's on procedure and three point some. So it's not city clerk there. It said a copy of each proposed ordinance shall be provided for each alderman at the time of its introduction. Copies of electronic and print form shall be provided by the city clerk for inspection by the residents of the city without fear of charge, including a copy in the office of the city clerk until it's finally adopted or fails in adoption. But then if we look down at city clerk, um, <clears throat> the city clerk shall be custodian of and have on file in their office all public city documents shall ensure these documents are kept promptly updated <coughs> and are easily available to the public for review at all times in print and electronic format. Does it say that it's... It does not say free there. It might have been said free there. It might have just simply say there shall not be any... Any charge. Any okay, well, we, can, charge. we can go back and motion to insert for free or whatever. 
Are you talking? Are you talking about creating a physical paper copy of the budget? Well, it says. Uh, are, are you? This, no, this is for Greg. Oh, okay. Are you thinking someone would come up and take advantage of it and try just to run up a large copy cost? I don't know that it would be necessarily taken advantage of it if somebody really wanted to take it home and study, but it is a book. That's true. My concern, I didn't want to see the city charging people 50 cents for a copy of paper, or a sheet of paper copy. I don't, uh, and I don't have a problem with that, but it seems to me that that's where the, that's where the requirement of the electronic version would come in. It doesn't cost the city, exactly. at best, maybe a disk. Uh, or they could just send the email it. Or, or email yeah, right. But they're going to have an electronic copy in some form or another. All we're asking them to do is share that. Okay, then there shall be no remuneration for providing electronic copies to the public in any form for any city business. That, that would cover it. It says, are you, are you, are you proposed to, to add that someplace well, or, they, or as part of the budget? Well, do you want to add it here? Well, I mean, if we're going to do it, we should probably add it where it counts for all city documents. Then that's that's where we should do it. Where wherever wherever it's all inclusive. It would be five I don't want to have to put it in there every time a word copy comes up. It would be five point three B. Can we can we add that as a whole business item to the yes? Yeah, we'll go out to right. Can you have the way to do that? Yeah, the next agenda that we have. As a housekeeping matter. Okay. Uh, he's going to reread 11.6, which has been altered to sound like the last one we just discussed. So. 11.6 public records. Copies of the budget and the capital programs as adopted shall be public record and shall be made available to the public at suitable places in the city. The Board of Aldermen shall have published in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the city and or in any other electronic media available to the public a summary accounting of the receipts and expenditures for the preceding year. So I got covered. Take a motion. Good job. Motion to approve. Okay. Jason motions. Second. Thank you. Susan Dolan. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Asian. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Charlotte Wilson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Lisa Anderson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Susan Dolan. I had many say yes. Okay. This motion is adopted. 11 0. All right. Section 11.7, amendment after adoption. Section 11.7, amendment after adoption. A supplemental appropriate fees. If during the first fiscal year, the city administrator certifies that there are available for appropriation revenues in excess of those estimated in the budget, the Board of Alderman by ordinance may make supplemental appropriations for the year up to the amount of such excess. B, reduction of appropriations. If at any time during the fiscal year, it appears probable to the city administrator that the revenues available will be insufficient to meet the amount appropriated, the city administrator shall report to the Board of Alderman without delay, indicating the estimated amount of the deficit, any remedial action taken by the city administrator, and recommendations as to any other steps to be taken. The Board of Alderman then shall take such further action as it deems necessary to prevent or minimize and deficit and for yeah, any say any deficit some wrong but, yeah. and any deficit and for that purpose it may by ordinance reduce one or more. Section C transfer appropriations. At any time during the fiscal year, the city administrator may transfer part of any of the unencumbered Unencumbered, I'm struggling with that word today. Appropriation 
balance among programs within a department, office, or agency, and upon written request by the city administrator, the city council, I guess it should be the board of aldermen, so the board of aldermen, made by ordinance, transfer part or all of any unencumbered appropriation balance from one department, office, or agency to another. D, emergency appropriations effective date. The supplemental appropriations and reduction or transfer of appropriations authorized by this section may be made effective immediately upon adoption and may be made by emergency ordinance in accordance with the provisions of Article 3, Section 3.13F, Emergency Ordinances. Yeah. Up the same right way that it's that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not far enough inaccurate at all. <laughs> 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 all right, Jason. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I, I, I got two two things under supplemental appropriations. Uh, I think you said if during the first fiscal year. I don't think it'd be first. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I think I'm either I misheard it or you misread it, but we just don't want to have the word first in there. Yeah. And then city, or under C, uh, where it says um, at the first sentence, at any time during the fiscal year, the city administrator may transfer a part. You left out the words of all of any. Of all of Right. And yeah, I've just changed the loss of the word A and the name. So. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, excuse me, please. Uh, I'll be the last sentence on the page. The uh, OA shall take such further action as it deems necessary to prevent or minimize any deficit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we changed that. I'm not that good of a typist. And my wife really suffers with me. I have to do a good job. <laughs> On that same sentence, is that a sentence finished? The Board of Aldermen then shall take such further action as it deems necessary to prevent or minimize any deficit, and for that purpose, it may, by ordinance, reduce one or more. What? No. Yeah. One or the Indian is like. Alright, I assume it's appropriation. That's it. I'll try to lift something up. <laughs> Um, 
Pardon the Lord. <coughs> Sorry. Thanks, Lisa. We are voting on this, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Chris Emerson. Yes. Sandra Arbel. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. All right, we'll do section 11.8 tax rates and tax rolls. 11.8 tax rates and tax rolls. After the budget is finally adopted, the Board of Alderman shall by ordinance set the tax rates and levy on the various classes of property, and the levy so established shall be certified by the city clerk to the appropriate officials who shall compute the taxes and extend them upon the tax rolls. Section 11.9, sell bonds. The city shall be authorized to sell any bonds as may now or hereafter be authorized by law, except as otherwise required by law or this charter. All bonds issued by the city shall be sold as prescribed by ordinance. Any discussion on those two? Yes. Yeah. Motion to accept. All right. Okay. Um, by law or by this charter is what we've written and everything right. else. If you just put an extra by in there, just okay. That'd be fine. Well, there's a motion to accept. Second. Lisa, thank you for second. Any other discussion? All right. We'll go ahead and. Uh, Take the roll, please. Are we voting on 11.8 and 11.9? Yes, sir. Give her a second to catch up. We'll <coughs> Steve Gunther. Yes. Sandra Marple. Yes. Lisa Emerson, yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Michael McDonough. Not here, Jim Major. Yeah. Susan Dolan. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Charlie Nelson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Mark Norman. Yes. All right, motion carries on those. Both of them. That finishes. Article 11. Article 12 franchises was pre previously approved. Article 13 was previously approved on licensing taxation. We're now on Article 14, General Provisions, which uh, Ted was so gracious to go ahead and uh, make copies for everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. So I know I'm trying to get her the electronic format. Yeah, yeah I think she's got it. Um, thank you, Jeanette. <laughs> and uh, we'll go ahead and start with section 14 general provisions. We have a volunteer to read. Anyone? I'll tell you. Ted, are you correct? Who else? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You guys just decide. Article 14 general provisions. Section 14.1, personal financial interest. Any elected or appointed officer, employee, or member of any committee, authority, board, or commission of the city who has any direct or indirect substantial financial interest as defined by the conflict of interest statutes of Missouri, A, in any part transacting business with the city, or B, in the subject matter of any city transaction, shall make known that interest and shall refrain from voting upon or otherwise participating in his or her capacity as a city officer, employee, or member in such transaction. Any city officer, employee, or member who willfully conceals such a substantial financial interest or willfully violates the requirements of this section shall be guilty of malfeasance in office or position and shall forfeit the office or position. Violation of this section with the express or implied knowledge of the party transacting business with the city shall render the transaction voidable by the city. <coughs> shall he, he said, no, let's go ahead and do this. I think this has got a comment or two. Um, 
third line, you read in any part of transacting business with the city? It's, is it supposed to be part or party? I wasn't sure if it made sense. In any party? I mean, how do you have financial interest in any party? It, well, I mean, can you have financial interest in a particular person? I might just read the word that was there. No, I understand. No, it's in part, but I, it's fine. Oh, I said part. Oh. I didn't know if it made sense. And it does. I misread the word that was there. Well, it is part. Well, no, I just didn't know if it made sense as having a financial interest in a party. Okay. If it does. Sorry. No, it's not. Motion to adopt. Okay. Second. All right. There's a motion to adopt and a second. Mark. Motion. Okay. Second. Jason Green. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Charlotte uh, Nelson. Yes. Jim Asher. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Steve Gunn. Yes. Okay. Motion carries again. 11 0. All right. 4 point, 14 point 14.2 prohibitions. <coughs> Section. 14.2 prohibitions. A. Activities prohibited. 1. Discrimination. No person shall be appointed or removed from or in any way favored or discriminated against with respect to any city position or appointed city administrative office because of race, sex, age, disability, national origin, political or religious opinions or affiliations. 2. False reports. No person shall willfully make any false statement, certificate, mark, rating, or report in regard to any test, certification, or appointment under the personnel provisions of this charter or the rules and regulations made thereof, or in any manner commit or attempt to commit any fraud preventing the impartial execution of such provisions, rules, and regulations. Undue influence, or three undue influence. No person who seeks appointment or promotion with respect to any city position, position or appointed city administrative office shall directly or indirectly give, render, or pay any money, service, or other valuable thing to any person for or in connect, connection with his or her test, appointment, proposed appointment, promotion, or proposed promotion. Four, seal weapons. Penalties, B, penalties, any person who will let me, let me interject there. There was uh, a couple of uh, charters that had the section on concealed weapons. I put that in there only to make comment. Is, there, is this a concern here? Okay, if it's not, then we can strike out four concealed weapons and go on to B. So, so we can leave that in the discussion. I just want to make it clear to everyone. Right. B. Penalties. Any person who willfully violates any of the provisions of Sections 12.2a, Activities Prohibited, shall be guilty of a crime and upon conviction thereof, shall be punishable as may be provided by ordinance or law. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would strike. I would ask that we strike concealed weapons. Okay. Subparagraph 4. I just want to bring it up because it was in some other charges. So that'd be fine. You can always be at I don't carry a weapon then. <clears throat> All right, uh, Lisa's got a couple of minor corrections, I think. I want somebody else to. Um, on B, penalties, any person who willfully violates any of the provisions in the charter shall be guilty of the crime. How does the document convict someone? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a trial issue. I, I think that might be overstepping its bounds, but maybe someone else can comment. Um, there's a whole judicial procedure for that sort of thing, but uh, an A1 discrimination, as I suggested at the beginning of our document, to take care of every position, much like the city uh, clerk issue of making all documents uh, public and free of charge. We have it in one specific section that covers all documents. I would once again suggest we move discrimination to the beginning of the document and not discriminate against anyone for anything uh, that's mentioned here, which is what I was trying to do originally. So um, that would be my suggestion is to make non-discrimination an issue across the board in the charter and not just section it off into one little thing under 14.2 and also to look at 14.2b because of the penalties, making a judicial call there. I 
And you just said our penalties to change the section, correct? Because it's not 12.2a, it's 14. Oh, I didn't mention that at all. No, I was just concerned that a document is making judicial calls and saying that people are guilty of crimes. I did, did you see that before? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, it says, shall be guilty of a crime and upon and then conviction. So it already judges them to be guilty of a crime. Mercy. By adopting the national guilty of a crime. But that's, that, yeah, it's not saying if, it just says shall. That's good. Amen. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, that's just, yeah. Yeah, what bothers me about shall be guilty of a crime is a little bit indescriptive. I mean, crime, is it a civil crime, a criminal crime? Is it a misdemeanor, is it a felony? Or I just doesn't really describe. I think that's a little too, I mean, I don't know. It may need to be general, but. Well, I, my I word crime itself, I mean, most people think of crime as a felony. I did take this wording directly from the amended lease of document, this exact wording. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying the next is right, I'm just saying that's, that's where I got it from. But well, we change the wording to shall upon conviction be guilty of the crime. But well, the strike shall be guilty of the crime upon conviction. It's just been uh, punishable as they can provide by ordinance or law that covers everything. Shall be punishable as it may be provided by the law. Just to strike those words out. Okay. Just shall to shall be guilty of a crime and upon conviction there. Just shall be punishable. Okay. Yeah. So it is right. Again. Okay, I'm still wondering about if it's civil law that we're talking about or criminal law. And if it's punishable by, to me, as a crime, would be, it could be imprisonment. Um, it's just a state, so open ended that the state of Missouri defines a crime as, as being an offense against the criminal code. In order to go to jail, it has to be something greater than, a, than an infraction. Well, you know, that's not even true. <clears throat> but but I, you can't be convicted of a civil offense. <coughs> Conviction has to be done with a crime. And so I think it excludes civil law altogether. I would point out that at the very end, it says, as may be provided by ordinance of law or ordinance or law. So if such ordinance or law doesn't exist, then this is just words. Now, those ordinances and laws do exist, but it's referring you back to them in order to, to get the, you know, to get the specific punishment. The word willfully is generally used in criminal law to state a, mental state, it means there has to be intent. And, and I think this whole thing is written that way. So it, it's the general description of an intentional um, offense against the criminal code. <clears throat> I've looked at a couple other charters just to, uh, just real quickly to check on this and the uh, a couple of the other charters do address this. I'm going to have Lisa reread the way they have got it on there because it does make a lot more sense. It's very similar. It just says uh, any person who willfully violates any of the subsection or provisions of subsection 18.2a activities prohibited so upon conviction be punishable, uh, punishable as may be provided by ordinance or law. Makes it real simple. Did everybody get that? I'm going to have Lisa reread it. But, uh, or, or, or you could even put, should be guilty of violating, one, uh, violating civil rights. Uh, and upon, and they did not be qualified for ordinance anyway. They've got the right ordinance to cover this. this thing. So, I'm 
response to that. I think some, I mean, some of them could be just state statutes, couldn't they? Yes. Um, well, each of these things, what, one, two, and three are protecting civil rights, discrimination, false reports, and do influence. I think it's still within the city's ability to make, to make those attacks criminal. And in fact, what it's saying is if you, if you do any of the things that we specifically prohibit here, then you could be prosecuted. It's not saying that it can prosecute you. It's not saying who prosecutes you or that it has to be city or state. It's just making it unlawful to do those things. Okay, thank you. Okay, please, you want to reread the deep list? 14.2b, penalties, any person who willfully violates any of the provisions of section 14.2a, 14.2, yeah. Okay, 14.2, well, shall, it, it is 14.2a, yeah, so. 14.2a, shall upon conviction be punishable as may be provided by ordinance or law. And I would still recommend to move one to begin with the document. As a guilty of crime. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they took out the Okay. All right. So I think that clears that up. Is everybody happy with that? Yes, Susan. Activity prohibited being engaging the city in any foreign treaty. Any what? I'm sorry. Engaging the city in any foreign treaty. Right, that's a new one. I mean, I haven't for seen that in any chart, but I mean, for, for which number? Sorry. It would be. Uh, maybe um, it's a fourteen to a subsection. Four. Four. Oh, you mean a whole new subsection? Yeah. <laughs> how would we, how would the city enter into, or even begin to consider entering into a treaty? I'd have to expand upon that later. It's going to take some time to explain. Okay. Do you have more? So, so we can we can at least approve it as it is. If you want to bring a point forward in our next meeting, we can do that. Okay. Any greater understanding as well. Yeah. Okay. Susan's wanted to add, add something in the. Uh, Instead of concealed weapons, there would be another possible item number four. Okay. But she doesn't have words for it right now. So it could also always be something that we could add. It shouldn't hold us up from approving 14.2 prohibitions. Okay. 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 So what's we're not adding it in at this time. No. We would just be voting on what is presented here before us. Correct. Okay, gotcha. I mean Second. And this will be 14.2 A and B. Yes. Any other considerations before we vote? Would Lisa mind reading the penalties one more time? The, the final. B, penalties. Any person who willfully violates any of the provisions of section 14.2 activities prohibited, yeah, 14.2 AM, sorry, activities prohibited shall be, shall upon conv conviction be punishable as may be provided by ordinance or law. Sorry, I'm reading on the two copies. Yeah. All right, any other discussion? We'll take a vote. Ted Norman? Yes. Jen Anderson? Yes. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Susan Dolman? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Jim Asher? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. All right. Uh, session. What's that? Everybody's to the side of the Section 14.3. Political activity in 
14.4. You want to go ahead and read both those, Greg? 14. Or, yes, 14. Section 14.3, political activity. All employees may exercise their rights as private citizens to express opinions and if a qualified voter of the city to, provoke, to vote in any municipal election. Political affiliation, participation, or contribution shall not be considered in making any city employment decision. No city officer, committee, authority, board, or commission member, or employee shall use official authority or official influence for the purpose of interfering with or affecting the result of an election to a Raytown city office or any ballot proposition. No city officer, committee, authority, board, or commission member, or employees shall directly or indirectly coerce or command a city employee to pay, lend, or contribute anything of, of value to a committee, organization, agency, or person for the political or electoral pro purposes of any candidate for Raytown City Office or any ballot proposition. Section 14.4, all residents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, can I just stop you for one second? I have two questions. Oh. Okay. Um, can we chop out Raytown since we've not been doing that anywhere else and just put city and capital like we've been doing? Okay, I think, sorry. That was too small. That's one. Yeah. Okay. So we strike the Raytowns? Yeah, there was two city places. City city. And city. And capitalize and city. Okay. The next one you want to take out the city of West Plain. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless we're changing the name. Okay, go ahead and read 14.4. Thanks. Section 14.4 all, all ordinances effective on municipal land. In addition to all other powers here and granted, the city shall have the right and authority to administer and enforce all of all its municipal ordinances within all areas owned or occupied by the city which are outside of the corporate city limits. Chair Beyond. No, let's go ahead and get those two. 14.5 notice of suits. No action shall be maintained against the city or or on account of any injury growing out of alleged negligence of the city unless notice shall first have been given in writing to the mayor within 90 90 days of the occurrence for which said damage is claimed, stating the place, time, character, and circumstances of the injury, and that the person so injured shall claim damages therefore from the city. Chair. Okay, yes, one second. Um, 14.4, privilege to keep consistent with the rest of the document. What? In addition to all other powers here and granted, the city shall have the privilege and authority to administer and enforce all its municipal ordinances and so forth, because that's what we changed it to in the rest of the document. Okay. Yes, Susan? There, for you can with me. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Where was that at? I'm sorry. Third, fourth word from the end of the sentence. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. On five, 14.5. Yes. Thank you. We try. The more we catch now, the less we have to worry about. So. Okay. And since what we changed was 14.4, can you read that again so I can make sure I got words right? 14.4, all ordinances effective on municipal land, in addition to all other powers here and granted, the city shall have the privilege and authority to administer and enforce all its municipal ordinances within all areas owned or occupied by the city which are outside the corporate city limits. Okay, thank you. All right, <laughs> any other? We'll take a motion. Well, I have. Okay, great. Go. Actually, you may want the motion first, but it's 14.5 notice of suits. I do have some questions on that. Well, let's go ahead and try to answer your question before we do a motion. Okay. It says that no, no action shall be maintained against the city 
or on or account of any injury during our alleged negligence of the city unless notice shall first have been given in writing to the mayor. Oh, within 90 days the mayor, or should it be the city? Yeah. Rather than yes. one individual. Yeah. Right. That's one suggestion. I also wonder if you can really, it's kind of like saying it shall not rain after 9 o'clock in the evening. Because somebody, if somebody wants to bring suit against the city, they can anyway. Now, maybe this is for just internal purposes uh, to avoid suit or damage claims. But I, 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 I don't know within 90 days of the occurrence for which said damage is planned, stating the time, character, and circumstances of injury. And that the person so injured will claim damage is therefore from the city. So it sounds to me like it's it's more like a negotiation with the city rather than a lawsuit. Because it sounds like it's something with the city may be trying to solve the problems. I don't know if the 90 days is appropriate. Uh, I don't know. Would that be those who a year later? Come back and say, I'm sure that's probably the reason, correct? So it, it gives guidelines that you have 90 days from the account of the injury, or the ne negligence. Should, should, we make should, it, right, exactly. should we make it a part of the section that says the city, that it's incumbent upon the city to give uh, an agreed party knowledge of this? Because a normal person is not going to know this exists. I mean, because well, I mean, ninety-nine percent of people are going to know yeah, much right. of what's in. I understand that, but in this case, let's say, for instance, uh, they plow, they're plowing the snow on my street, and they gouge my yard three feet deep with the snow plow, and it just tears up the sod and all this stuff. So somebody says that they don't know that they can go to the well. I would think an average person would probably go to the city and say, "Hey, you damaged my property." But some may not know the, correct, the way that you're supposed to do it. And I, I don't know what the proper way to handle that is. Do they mean personal injury against the person like bodily as opposed to someone's yard? I mean, I yeah, think it that, says injury growing out of alleged negligence. My you know, question is with Greg's thing, though, if they make a gal to the yard and go out there and they trip it without knowing it's there. And they're injured. It's, you know. Is this an appropriate question here? Um, for instance, it says notice of suits. So an individual must notify the city, is what it's saying, correct? Mm -hmm. Within 90 days. Well, what if it were, first of all, how is that? I mean, there's a statute of limitations on any sort of grievance if you bring it before a court. I mean, that's already determined by your state. And it's so not going to be 90 days. Right, and it's not really, we, we can't, I don't think, determine that for this you know, state. And otherwise, if you took it backwards, what if um, an individual came up to City Hall and pillaged at the City Hall and then somebody fell into a hole or something? Um, would the individual have to, uh, would the city have to therefore have 90 days to notify the individual they did that? I mean, I'm just saying that it doesn't, it doesn't wash in either respect with me. I, I would just recommend just to cut it out entirely because it seems a bit that. Sure. Uh, yes. Good. I think that I think that some of the words in that whole section are being oversimplified. I think this is another example of something that that attorney needs to. I don't think injury has anything to do with personal human damage. I think it's injury in general, injury at law. And whether or not this is even needed is probably something to ask that attorney rather than, I think you're right, rather than hold us up here. Well, and then, in, uh, in, in my own ignorance, I've, I've known a couple of cities where, and I'm the mayors of the city, where the mayors are actually the ones that are held liable for the community. So we, we cross out the word mayor with the city, but in the end, does it really go to? It? I mean, I'm just I'm just saying that, that is the case in some cities. So uh, I, I kind of agree. Um, we can uh, definitely have the attorney review this notice of suits. And we can take it out. We can 
uh, postpone it till that time. Or so we we got held on 14.3 and 14.4. I'm sorry. Okay, Susan, did you have something else? Yeah, just more of the same. You got the city writing the ordinances. You got the state state writing the statutes. Where do we come off writing law within the charter? That's it. Cover the cover the ninety percent, I guess. Yeah, you have something. Okay, I'd make a motion to accept 14.3 because I think it can easily the same argument can be made about 14.4. I, I don't know how much authority we have to say that we can enforce our city ordinances outside our city limits. We may be able to, but I, I don't know that anybody here can answer that. But it's our land outside our city. Uh, we've had park land outside our right. city and, and it was handled by outside city ordinances, not ours. We made park rules, but they didn't call this city or this city's enforcement arm to go down there and deal with it. They called that city. But even the land that we own on the road back there? I don't know that we ever had a whole trail out there. I was speaking specifically about the park. I second. All of us second. Let me uh, see if I can find something in the NML just to. So we're setting aside 14.4 and 14.5. Is that motion? Yeah, I just moved to accept 14.3 because it's fairly simple. I, I, I just think 14.4 is worth asking before we just enter, put it in. I wouldn't work to formalize it. Discussion then, and we have a motion and a second to, to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and read what the NNL suggests puts in for notice of suits. It says, No action shall be maintained against the city for or on account of any injury growing, growing out of alleged negligence of the city unless notice shall first, notice shall first have been given within writing to the city manager, mayor, who's ever in charge, city. Within 90 days of the occurrence of, for which said damage is claimed, stating the place, time, character, and circumstances of injury, and that the person so injured will claim damage is therefore from the city. And that's what the MML says. That's so, the MML. Uh -huh. That's a suggested wording for that, which is pretty much what was in there. My question on the notice of suits is, is uh, where's the city attorney at in all this? This is a suit. Why, why go to the mayor? Well, you can go to the city. The city has to go over with their attorney, obviously. But I'm just letting you know what's written in the MNL. So we can, we can leave these two sections in there and let the attorneys go review it, and then they can make comment to it. So. Okay, so 14.3. Uh, to approve just 14.3, Janet Anderson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Denise Anderson. Yes. Charlotte Dawson. Yes. Uh, Tim Bowman. Yes. Jim Asia. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Sandra Marble. Yes. Okay, section 14.3 carries 11 and 0. Um, we need a motion to carry 14.45. Are we just passing on, or? We don't want to list pass more. Just pick all. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Section 14.6, official bonds. All officers and employees of the city who receive, disperse, or are uh, responsible for city funds and such other officers and employees as the Board of Aldermen by ordinance may designate shall within such time after election or appointment as may be fixed by ordinance and before entering upon the discharge of their duties give bond to the city in such sums and with such surveys as shall be prescribed by ordinance or law <coughs> and subject to approval by the Board of Aldermen conditioned upon the faithful and proper performance of their duties and for the prompt accounting for and paying over to the city of all monies belonging to the city 
that may come into their hands. The city, the city shall pay the premiums on all such bonds. That is the longest sentence in the world. I'm sorry, I'm just copying what the other said. We should have well, probably sent it back to him. Well, I mean, again, in my effort to just put something out, I, I reviewed all the charters, put down what was consistent in all the charters for us to review, and that's why we're having to review now. So, put your periods where you want to put your periods. Basically, saying you have to be bonded. Bond the employees. Yeah. I think it's a long sentence, but I think the meaning is accurate. And I'll move to accept it. Second. Any other discussion? We'll take a vote. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mark. Mark Moore. Yes. Senator Harbaugh. Yes. Jim Asia. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yeah. Greg Walters. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Nine o'clock. Yep. I said. All right. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. We'll take up the 14.7 by Monday. <laughs> No, it's like 45 bucks a year. Do you have the dates of the next three meetings? Yeah.